All right, thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Now, a few days ago, the federal government launched a new policy document called the Green Alternative, and that is expected to redirect the country's agriculture sector. State, State House, House correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Olasha in there was at the launch, but to warn that the video contains flash photography. It is the official unveiling by the Federal Agriculture Ministry of the Agricultural Sector Roadmap, the Green Alternative. It is a policy document that is designed to unleash the agricultural sector's potential for economic development. A document Vice President Yemi Oshibajo believes is coming at the right time. And while the Vice President is optimistic that this policy may make the difference, he stresses that the problem with Nigeria has never been lack of policy, but implementation. The Ministry of Finance has practically concluded plans to recapitalize and re-engineer the Bank of Agriculture. We expect that before the end of this quarter, the Bank of Agriculture should be ready to give single-digit interest rates, interest rate loans to farmers. This agricultural revolution calls for us all to farm, even small vegetable farms. Interestingly, the only commercial activity that our constitution allows a public officer is farming. So we have no excuse. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo emphasizes that the Agriculture Ministry must ensure that the policy aligns with all aspects of the economic plan of government. Our homegrown school feeding program, which is one which seeks to provide one good meal a day to primary school students, is described as homegrown specifically to emphasize the fact that the food will be from the farms in each state. On a spot, the agriculture minister insists that he will not be throwing old policies over bird, but will build on previous foundations, expanding, deepening and adjusting policies where necessary. It has to be attractive, especially for younger people whom we are trying to bring in. We've got to make sure the yields are good, the seeds are good, the fertilizer is good, extension services are provided so that nobody goes in there to be like his grandfather or father whom she or he sees as a failure because they couldn't make ends meet. A farmer in Enugu declared a few days ago that one year ago he couldn't pay the school fees of his five children. The commissioner in Enugu, by the way, was the staff of our ministry. And then he got good fertilizers and seeds. And on one hectare or two hectares, he openly declared to us that he earned one million naira at the end of his harvest of profit. Participants agree that the agri sector roadmap is a very laudable document and can serve as a pathway to Nigeria's economic development. But without proper execution, it might just be another laudable document left unfulfilled. Maria Olashendi, TVC News. All right, thanks for joining us. Now, joining us on TVC Breakfast is African farmer Mogaji. He's the CEO of X-Ray Farms Consulting. It's good to have you join us right now. Good morning. Thanks Thank for you. joining thanks. us. And just in case our viewers are wondering, uh, you know, about that introduction, African farmer is your real name. It's yes. your legal name, yes. right? Legal name. The, the okay. name is African farmer. Now, t tell us about uh, yes. why African farmer. How did that come? <laughs> well, um, some of us saw today, yesterday, mm. I actually changed the name 12 years ago, mm. um, looking at where Nigeria would be now, and um, uh, a farmer farming in Nigeria would be a Nigerian farmer, mm. in Ghana a Ghanaian farmer, but a farmer farming across Africa or involving agribusinesses around Africa becomes an African farmer. Mm. That's the vision. And that's what you do? Yeah. You farm across Africa? I farm and I consult, Africa? train. Well, mm. Not across That's Africa, the vision. but now in three West African states. Oh, so you are the farmer beautiful. who saw tomorrow. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's good to have you on. Thank you. Now let, let's come to uh, you. Watch that report. The federal government just launched a, a, a new a new policy now. Yes. Mm. That someone, some analysts, even yesterday, were saying, "Well, let this not be one of those 
sloganization mm -hmm. that we are used to. We have been used to a lot and lot over the years. Yeah. Slogans, slogans, and slogans, and they don't translate. But however, we hope, what, you have watched this. Yeah. You've been following this generally. Mm -hmm. What is different with the green alternative, for instance? Well, the Start difference is that we don't have an alternative um, revenue. It's uh, foreign to earn in dollars, mm -hmm. and so they need the agricultural sector to work. Um, generally, the companies are cutting down. So now it's not just policy, but most importantly, we need two things to make agriculture work. Mm -hmm. And we have the two things working for us. Okay. We need political will, and President Buhari is putting that together. And also we have a Minister of Agriculture mm -hmm. who is a practitioner and who has burnt his hands also, so he knows what it feels when you bring investors in and the, the industry is not what you package for them. So we have those two things. It's working from experience, it's as practical as possible. And so those two things, and don't forget, we have so many people now who want to go into the industry, so um, we are moving in the right direction. Mm. Yeah. That, that's um, really interesting to know. So what, what you're saying is, then is that agriculture can actually become Nigeria's gold mine? Agriculture is Nigeria's gold mine, not can become. Mm. <laughs> well, it used to be. Yes, and it then, used to be. And then, you yes. know, there was the, the, the long... Yes. And, and when you check what used to be and what we have now, mm. we didn't have the population we have now. Uh, we didn't have the resources we have now in terms of human capital. So, but now we, we have quite a lot of youths. We have IT. We have everything working for us now. It's just that we need leadership. And um, I'm, one of the thing, greatest things that happened to me in my 21 years in this industry is to hear oh. Governor uh, Okorocha declare that um, the, the workers can have two days to themselves. We need those kind mm. of radical decisions. But what we need mostly now is for the NGOs, for people to embrace the spirit of volunteerism and say, oh, this man is serious. He has shown his intention. Let's plug in. Let's help him. Everything is right. The platform is right. I'm excited about 2016, especially the document. If mm. you've read the document, the document highlights everything. Where what the government needs to do, and mostly the private sector now, mm. is to begin to show the Naira and Kobo how you can make money from this. Don't forget the dollar, the prices of food is going higher, uh, commodities are going higher. So everybody wants to know how they can make money. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to begin to show the people working, the nine to five people, this is how to make the money. We need to show investors. We don't, I, I say this, we may not necessarily need foreign investments in Nigeria. We have as the, far as agriculture as far is as agriculture is concerned. We have the monies here. We have mm. the monies here. We need to just uh, open up and let people. Many people have, have invested over the years in stock. The stock is not paying them. They've invested in real estate. The, the real estate is not really moving, you know. So, but the funds are here. So we only need to rechannel mm. the the the, um, the focus by showing people government policy. Are you excited about um, Yemi Oshibaja, the vice president, saying that the Bank of Agriculture, the Bank of Agriculture will give a single digit um, loan no. yeah, I'm, to, I'm, to farmers? <clears throat> yes, I know because you see, these are men of integrity. Okay, so when they speak, they know they're speaking to the world. Now, I was on a program last week organized by Pat, Professor Pato Tomi, mm -hmm. where the MD of um, uh, uh, the bank came to speak. Yes, the bank has a lot of issues, but the good thing is that you have someone at the arm of affairs who understands the operations of the bank. And so they're trying to go digital, they're trying, you know, they have uh, limited um, branches, they're trying to leverage on telephone, IT. So, uh, and, and it told, it, it gave um, an idea of the roadmap, and it's practical. The most mm. important thing is that these documents need to be practical. And, and I know a couple of people in the Ministry of Agriculture in Abuja who have the knowledge and most of them have the heart. It's the heart, not the documents. Okay, we'll come back to the issue of the bank still because uh, there are some things I would like us to understand from you. But let's go to understanding some basic, basic information in mm. here. Now, food is a basic requirement of every living organism. But 
One cannot consume what is not available, therefore, for Nigeria to be food sufficient. The country should have an active chain of activities that will ensure that food is readily available at all times. Successive governments have tried to promote food production to feed a constantly increasing population and avoid a food crisis, but their efforts have been hindered by some factors within uh, their control. Or is it outside of their control? It's within their control. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> factors that could make all the difference in the field of agriculture include uh, favorable agri policies, good road network, uh, food storage, and processing uh, facilities, modern farm machines, and techniques. Yes, I guess as far as that's concerned, it is actually within their control. Yes. Now, Nigeria has a very high bill for importation of food uh, products. Minister of State for Solid Mineral Development, Abubakar Bawa Bwari, in April said the country spends more than 1.5 trillion naira annually on food importation. Mm. That's a huge one. Mm. But it is worthy of note that uh, most of the food items we import can easily be grown locally with enough left over for exports. Now, in 2010, Nigeria was the world's largest producer of grain sorghum, uh, followed by the United States and India. But Nigeria moved to the third largest sorghum producer in 2014. Nigeria is the largest producer of yams in the world, followed by Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava in the world, followed by Thailand and Indonesia, and the second largest producer of millet in the world. Nigeria is also the second largest producer of cashew nuts uh, with shell and the third largest producer of groundnuts with shell. Now, Nigeria is the third largest producer of palm kernels with Indonesia leading, while Malaysia is second. And lastly, Nigeria is the fourth largest cocoa producing country in the world. Now, other food crops that Nigeria grows in large quantity compared to other countries are plantain, mm. uh, which stands at sixth in the world. Now, papa, which is uh, papaya, if you call mm. it that way, the botanical names, is the fifth in the world. Pineapples, Nigeria stands at seventh in the world. Okra, Nigeria stands at second in the world. It's amazing. And speaking of okra, it's one of the most important vegetables, mm. actually, that you can eat. Onions, Nigeria is sixth. And ginger, fourth largest uh, producer of ginger in the world. Mango, ninth largest. Soybeans, 14th largest. Maize, 12th largest. Four major elements that constitute food security are availability, adequacy, accessibility, and storage. Okay, the three A's, availability, adequacy, accessibility. Do we have those in place? Availability, no. Hmm. Accessibility, no. Wow. Storage, no. So everything is a no, no, no. However, mm. with good potential. Ah. Now, with all you read out now, mm. uh, it shows that we are well ranked. We're in the first, in about 90% of what you oh, call that. Indeed. We are within the first, first one to nine. So it means that we have the ranking. All we need to do is to put the policies, which was just uh, reeled out, reeled out and for us to implement, to get the right people to coordinate. Implementation is what makes the difference. And so uh, when you say like mango, um, I, I was uh, on a US mission to Ghana last year and we, we went to visit uh, uh, a company and it was amazing to find out that they export, when you see um, pineapples, mangoes, mm. diced in Tesco in, in the UK, mm -hmm. It's produced and processed in Ghana. They only export the finished product. Guess what? Two, three months in the year, they have to go to Brazil and Argentina to take two cargo planes of mangoes to Ghana to process and send to the UK, where Nigeria can leverage on that. Yes, there are some species of mangoes. We were looking for those species here when I came back. You know, and, and I discovered that in Undo State, those varieties of mangoes are actually available, well, available. available. and mangoes have been described as a king of fruits yes, i read so that sometime back. and and added to that mm. i read some years ago that a nigerian farmer one of the biggest farmers actually makes about six million dollars from yeah. mangoes yes. every year yeah. i mean uh, that is amazing that's big they, they take a shipload of mangoes out of nigeria it's just when we when we show the private sector because it's the, the success in the agricultural sector is dependent 
on the private sector. So it's basically showing the private sector what can be done. Mm. You know, so we, we made the inquiry and they said, oh, fine. They, they, that company just signed an agreement um, with Walmart. Mm -hmm. And so Walmart has asked them, okay, fine, you can source your fruits, your mangoes from West Africa. But it's taking, they're, they're kicking off that contract next five years. Now, so they need more people to grow. It's cheaper for them to bring a cargo plane to Nigeria and take those mangoes back to Ghana than go to Brazil or Argentina. Mm -hmm. You know, so we only need to begin. The government needs to show practical things. I'm sure as I'm talking now, some people look and afford who are planning retirement, you know, can say, oh, fine, five years from now, I can do mangoes. I want to earn foreign currency, you know, because Ghana, Nigeria is dollar, not mm -hmm. Naira. You know, so we just need to be practical with enough of English. We need to be practical. We need to show what can be done. Right now, there's biofuels. Yeah. Right now, we're not. Uh, the, the developed world is no longer looking at even charcoal. We're looking at uh, cassava peels, cassava leaves, the, the waste, you know, to, to do uh, what we call biofuels. Mm -hmm. And it can be done in Nigeria and exported. You know, so there are so many, even grasses, grasses, elephant grass, is a high, there are, there are some that have very high um, energy in them that we can grow here. That's, we only need to be practical. You, you just touched on a very, very sensitive one that's uh, causing <laughs> a lot of debate now. <laughs> Speaking of importing grass yes. uh, from Brazil, uh, well, according to the uh, Greek minister, mm. this, uh, you know, the, the, the yield or the quality of the grass in yes. Brazil will rub off positively on uh, livestock and cattle. Yes. And all you, of that. You, You're now talking about grass. Now, you, you see, the, the <laughs> truth is, mm. um, I've gotten to a stage uh, where I'm not afraid to speak the truth we may need to import some of these grasses. Okay. Because over the last 20, 30 years, our research institutes have not been well funded, one, and even the, few, the, the release funds have not been well implemented. So, but other countries have actually invested in research and development, and they've come out with some of these grasses that have high energy and coal, and they're still I can't call them organic, but they are not GMs. They are not GMOs. Mm. So, um, it won't, we import vehicles, though we can manufacture and assemble here. So, we may need to get, if the policy is, let's import the seeds and multiply here. I am for that. But let's import finished products to just be feeding and planting mm. here. I'm not for that. So, we can create more um, employment, bringing in the grass seeds, multiplying it across the states and getting it done as against bringing final products to just plant. So that's okay. where uh, we need to draw that line there. It's all right. I, 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 like, I like us to talk about uh, the issue of, because before, before we, I like us to talk about farm settlement. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. it's one thing that we have always, and the Minister of Agriculture spoke about farm settlement, mm -hmm. issues of aggregate extension and so on. Yes. These were things that were existent in the 70s and part of the 80s mm -hmm. as the case with me. Yes. Now, they are no longer there. But the point there is, farm, let, let's, let me, let, let's give them some information mm -hmm. here. Now, farm settlements are agricultural research and extension service centers. And they were set up in most parts of the country in the 70s. The farm settlement scheme of the then regional government had its shortcomings and challenges, but it still contributed largely to the country's food production that served as the mainstay of the economy. The farm settlement scheme of the past accounted for Nigeria's dominance in the production of cash crops like palm oil and rubber. Now, each region was reputed for the production of a major crop which earned them a foreign exchange. All right, now we know, we, we've heard of the of cocoa and rubber in the southwest, mm. palm oil and canal in the east, and then the granite pyramids mm -hmm. and cotton in the north. All of that disappeared one way or the other. Now, if I have to take it back to the issue of farm settlement, yes. I know that um, Ondo State is yeah. one of the states that has been talking about creating farm settlements mm -hmm. in some of the, if I bring it down, some forests, you okay. know, and then erecting farm settlements and all of that. But how effective would that be in the current situation where population is increasing and with all of the issues around? I think the syllabus, most of the people in administration are still using old syllabus. I'm sure if you want to write WAEC now, you will, you are likely not to do 
excellently <laughs> well. Not because you don't know it, but because you've moved on. Mm. Now we have a huge population now. Come, um, the old farm settlements, have they turned it around? Does it have infrastructure? So if you've not paid attention to the existing structures, why build a new one? Mm. Why don't you go and fund it, showcase what you're doing? That. So you have the lands there. You'll be amazed of, uh, when you, you know, a lot of people really don't deal with rural people. 17 mm -hmm. years of my life I've been with the rural people. So you need the, the accommodation that uh, Awolowo, Tafawa, Balewa, Namdi, Azukwe built then is not, you know, conducive for the average youth today. And another thing we do with the farm settlement is we want to bring urban youths to go to the rural communities. It won't work. They are used to this social life. Mm. We need to focus more on the rural youth. They may not be formally trained, but they've been doing the business with their parents mm. over time. Over, yes. And they have and, some experience. Yes, mm. and you don't have to spend so much the overhead, the cost of bringing a youth from Lagos, from Ibadan to the suburbs. Mm. It's going to be higher. But the rural youth is already used to that, you know. So what you do, what we should do is encourage the youths in the rural community to still stay in their homes, probably provide bikes. They don't want vehicles, they want bikes. Mm. Provide so they can bikes. access all yes, the... and it's cheaper. Provide bikes for them and they use the bikes to navigate their farms. When you check it, if you're bringing urban youths, you will be reducing that cost by like 70%. Mm. So let the urban youths focus on trading, value addition, marketing, mm. processing, while you let the youths in the rural area Focus. Okay, so let's uh, enlighten you more about this uh, farm settlements. The use of the settlement scheme allowed farmers uh, to belong to an agri farm service corporation where the farmers could purchase seeds, fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides. Machines such as tractors, plows, uh, slashes, etc. were also available to be used on the farm at a subsidized fee. Yeah, that was how it used to be. That's mm -hmm. what we're saying. But yeah. aside these, a primary and secondary school was available there to serve both the villagers and the families in the farm settlement. It's mm. part of what uh, uh, our guest is saying in the, in the studio right now. Now, for mm. example, cocoa was produced in the West. The earnings from cocoa was spent on many landmark projects, some of which are still evident today. Mm. Now, the University College Ibadan and the famous cocoa house are typical examples. Now in the East, palm produce was a major foreign exchange earner even before samples of Nigeria's oil palm was taken to uh, Malaysia and other countries. Then the palm oil amongst other farm produce was also exported and the region made so much revenue from it. The arable land in the northern part of the country also earned Nigeria pride of place as groundnuts and cotton were largely grown in that region and even exported. But in all, the woes of oil exploration heralded Nigeria's dark days, leading to total dependence on oil exportation. Uh, yes, indeed, Nigeria went from, you know, uh, a, a, an agriculture-oriented nation to yes. an oil-based one where people have actually described it as the curse of oil. Mm -hmm. And we're now struggling to, you know, uh, pull ourselves out of that uh, regime. Yes. Talk to us even more about these farm settlements because I'm, I'm curious about it. What exactly do you need to have in place, you know, in a farm settlement in such a way that it will attract uh, not just the, the rural youth that you, mm -hmm. you, you believe government should be focusing on, yes. but the urban youth, because even the rural youth wants to come to the urban area. Mm -hmm. And, yes, and yes. he doesn't mind if he's just coming to sell recharge card or ride uh, exactly. the commercial motorcycle because that's what's going on now. Yes, um, you see, w with the farm settlements, we only we need to build on the value chain. Let me use the word amplify the value chains. Mm. Um, I've said this over and over again. Bank of Industry needs to be needs to stop funding this one billion project and go to each local government. Split each state into four. Set up what you call incubation centers. Don't forget, production is not our issue. It's value addition. Mm. So when the farm settlements even go and produce, because everything about farm settlement is focused on production, let us have four incubation centers in each state, such that as you are producing, they outsource, outsource that incubation center, and some people are processing. Their business is just processing. Let the urban youths 
come and all they do is buy a different uh, value added. So a value addition, they buy and they take to go and sell to another person who is packaging, who is exporting. That is how to sustain the farm settlement. Farm settlement is like um, taking care of uh, eczema and living uh, mm -hmm. leprosy. <laughs> you know, so focus. So basically, farm settlement is not should not be the focus. Mm. The auxiliary businesses is bigger and can bring in more revenue than the farm settlement. So the existing farm settlements need to be visited. New ones need to be created. Now, so for it to spring up, it should not be a now affair. There are already existing farmers. They are already in cooperatives. We don't need to form any cooperative again. You know, just get them, let them see that. Let them see that the government is serious. And don't forget, even the, private, um, the farm settlements then was partly funded by private sector. Mm. Government created the platform. They did the job of government, create platforms. I'm just waiting to hear things like, you know, schools, um, health centers, mm. uh, recreation uh, centers, and all of that, so that there's some kind of life going on yeah. in those places that people will find it attractive. And, and, and you see now, you don't, with the help of internet, you don't need to spend so much money. Get uh, 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 internet service available there, and people can watch what they want to watch on the phones mm -hmm. most of the rural you'll be amazed that most of these rural people mm -hmm. who can't speak a word of english have access to internet and they are watching you know things so it's it's cheaper mm -hmm. to do all these things it's the practicality because most of the things i see are all this um, academic exercise put together fantastic words you know being eloquently you know spoken but, but the practicality and, and let me address this um, I've heard that the, 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 the discovery of oil has brought doom to the agricultural sector. I beg to disagree. I've been out of the country and I know that the, the, the discovery of oil now has brought more wealth to Nigeria. Because we have not farmed, it's a paradigm that people need to understand. We've not farmed our lands, so bulk of what we'll be producing is still fairly organic. Go to the U.S., go to France, they are facing different mm. types of diseases and pests. We don't have those things. Because they've overused their land, they've overused available their lands. land. Arable. And so they depend on Africa. There's a concept called land, Af African land grab. So most of mm. the multinationals now are coming to Africa to buy the land. So let's stop focusing on oil, boom and doom. Mm. And let's see the opportunity that the, um, the negligence of the industry is bringing. The price of organic products across the world has gone up three to five times. So it was a blessing mm -hmm. in disguise. It's a blessing God. for us to leverage. The, the whole world needs us now. All right, let, let's get mm -hmm. let's get back to. We were talking about the cash crops and uh, all of the regional issues mm -hmm. earlier on, and yes. we saw that the regional governments at that time were responsible yes. for mm -hmm. the groundnut in the north, or the kappa, uh, palm kernel in the east, and the cocoa in the west, as the case may be. Now mm -hmm. that region has been broken down into states. Yes. Now, and these states still have the same uh, uh, land, land tenure, yes. they still have all of those, and each state has something it has as a comparative advantage. Yes. Why are the states, because I see instead of the federal government coming up with all of this, we have to, doesn't this power even reside with the states mm -hmm. to yes. be able to take advantage of, 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 of things and get better and even improve on all of those cash costs we're talking about? It's really, federal government really has nothing to do with it. It's just that we blame federal government. Mm. We need to blame more the state governments, especially the southwestern state governments. You know, the resources, if our law did it before, and he did not take the land with him when he died, it means that we only need to get part of his spirit. And guess what? Most of the leaders we have now were somehow trained by our law. Indeed. Free education and co so mm. we only need that will. So they, they were first hand beneficiaries. Yes. So. And don't forget, we even the southwest is closer to any port. Mm. The average investor will prefer to come to the southwest than to go at any other place. Mm. Even with the challenges in the company in the economy now, the investors will still prefer to pitch their tents in the southwest. So we're not seeing any, you know, most of the governors come out like Governor Okorocha has done mm -hmm. to show that what I'm ready. 
you know so it's basically the governors that needs to sit up not only to say we want to give lands but now to begin to say okay this is what we are doing something like the river basins the lands we don't you just don't give the land mm. provide the implements there you know it's interesting you talk about uh, what um uh, rochas or Korocha is trying to do in yes. emo state but you have the nlc there uh fighting this, kicking uh, against the the two you days know, this, given to them yes indeed it is the, is the same thing in benway state mm -hmm. where a day is given so one would say maybe this is political it's not original to actually enhance agriculture per se because states can't pay salaries yes. in order to justify the fact that sorry for taking it out of mm -hmm, your mouth yeah. but in, in order to take it uh, you, you know make it look good uh, we give you two days off go on farm don't come to work because to justify the fact that we can't pay you salaries but this Mike, don't, don't forget that Rochas, according to him, uh, you know, he's saying those two days, they will still be paid. It doesn't mean that workers will be paid only three days and, you know, because they'll be on the farms for yeah. two days, uh, they will not be paid. You so, see, I mean, what's, what's really your take on this you see, I, I need uh, a course. direction that, you know, the Imo State government is taking? I did a course with World Bank called Risk and Opportunity. Now, we are so much used to looking at the negative side that we forget the positive side. If the governor is saying, I will pay you, I will still pay you, then go and get something done and let him focus more on other things. Now, even if you are not being paid, it's a function that we are not really, uh, the, the, the insecurity is a, is a major challenge. So basically, the average worker in Governor Okorocha's state can has the opportunity to earn more now mm -hmm. produce and there will be value addition so what that means is that instead of the government trying to fund you know all the aggregation of farms put together or the, the value they can focus on maybe packaging mm. you know so we if we look at the opportunity in that it means you have 48 hours two days to do something for yourself so get to the work and start doing it if you see these things is planned if NLC, NLC is doing their job, Okorocha is doing the job, Nigerians, we now need to do our, our job, job. <laughs> which is to have that national spirit come on us again. And you can be sure that that uh, spirit really has come on. I mean, every time but, I get home, the but, first thing but, but I look at the spirit at has is, always been there. Yeah, no, but you know, there seems to be some kind of revival. You yes. know, as I drive into my uh, my driveway, the first thing I look at my lemongrass that's gro growing right in front of you know the house, and of course at the back, uh, you know, planted uh, you know plantain, mm. and just looking at the the leaves, you know, spring up, <laughs> and the tomatoes and all of it's amazing. There is no feeling. There are no words to describe the, the feeling that one gets. And I'm just thinking, you know, if, if everybody uh, could do that. But really, even if you wanted to, mm. Lagos, for example, how many houses, you know, have front yards and backyards and across the country? But where, the la landlords will tell you there's no farming in here. Isn't you that can... where the building code really <laughs> should come in? See, if you come to my house now, in paint, 20 liter paint buckets, mm. you have tomatoes you have pepe. I'm doing it for some people in Luth now, okay. where I call it concrete farming. Everybody can still grow something. You can grow the okra you will consume all year round in paint buckets. Like the Japanese are doing yes. on this so We don't need the uh, hydroponics. <laughs> There's paint bucket everywhere being thrown away. There's a bucket in your house that probably is leaking somewhere and that you see around the streets where the Loma uh, people, they pack the sands. Mm. This sand is free. We are doing it. Go and pack those sands and plant the tomatoes. You know, so it's not rocket science, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let, let, let's talk about the issue of um, uh, infrastructure. Okay. Now, this policy by the Green Alternative Policy is out now. Like you said, it's a beautiful document. Mm -hmm. it, it has prospects, as the case may be. Now, we have all agreed, or ev all analysts have all agreed, Nigeria has huge infrastructure deficits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, how will this impact? negatively or to say be an obstacle to the implementation of this policy mm -hmm. well um let me say this now about 70 percent 60 to 70 percent of the food we consume is produced by the rural communities where you have the bad roads mm -hmm. however the food still gets to the urban sector 
at so, a higher cost? Well, yeah. not really. It, most of them get, go bad in mile 12 because yeah. there's a merchant uh, cartel there. So, but bottom line is that we know one thing. Let's work with what we know. We know that, uh, I want to say Governor Raji Fatola, <laughs> you know, he's a performer. So he will fix those things. But what we need to do is quality of seeds, quality of input. There are seeds that you use, that you can plant, that does not go bad like what we already have now. So, yes, the infrastructure. All right, we're still talking with our guest, African farmer Mogaji, CEO of X-Ray Farms uh, Consulting. We've been having an exciting discussion, really, on, you know, uh, the way forward as far as agriculture in Nigeria is concerned. Now, let's even look at the various uh, reforms under the last administration. There was the uh, um, uh, Agri Transformation Agenda, ATA, ATA. Growth Enhancement uh, Scheme, Staple Crop Processing Zones and, and all of this. And this actually helped in reducing Nigeria's um, food import bill drastically. Um, it is, you know, heartening to hear the Minister of Agri uh, during the uh, launch of this um, green alternative that the successes of the past will be, you know, uh, built, leveraged, on. leveraged on. Thank you. So, how going forward, what should we be doing with some of these um, schemes? Okay. Um, well, one of uh, I'm really excited about the Minister of Agriculture mm -hmm. uh, because the first interview after uh, he was uh, sworn in, he said. Agri would it won't take him one year it will take him three years and coming out with that true statement for mm -hmm. practitioners like me you know shows that okay this man knows what he's doing now and also you hardly find new administrations take up old administrations uh, programs mm -hmm. and reform it now yes the the old administration had those policies that were exciting, you know, but the implementation had some hiccups because of the practicality. However, coming from a practical perspective, mm. they just induced some things in it to make it work. So, um, like the GES, Growth and, and Enhancement scheme. scheme. Yes, the man studied the, the flaws and now they plugged the holes and it will work better because uh, they're paying attention to some stakeholders, you know. so. Uh, those policies, that aim of let's work on what is working goes a long way. And you know, one of those things, one of the opportunities now is that the previous, the past minister who is now um, in the African Development mm. Bank, who now knows that, oh, they are still working with what mm. I put with the down. template mm. he Yeah, so it, it, there's a we, we own it. So he can channel resources, you know, to do it. So the policies now will work. I can say that boldly will work because some of us also are willing to volunteer. Mm. You know, so um, we've not had it as good as this before, the political will. All right, now mm. for, b before we let you go, let's, let's see from this perspective. Yeah. There is the issue of uh, we need foreign exchange, we need to have, uh, we need to be able to export. Now, is it more profitable mm. to have sufficiency in production and then if there is excess, yes. then you can sell or is it, is it better to directly and deliberately plant for exportation? It's very important that we plan for exportation, uh, which is what I read in the executive summary of that policy statement. Mm. Now, because if you don't plan for exportation, when you plant for just local consumption, you miss out of the export. The bigger the vision, the better. So when you are planning for export, you take care, automatically take care of local needs. Take for instance, there's a client of mine who requires 500 tons of ugu every month to the UK. All he, the quality he can get, and he's a Nigerian, the quality he gets is 50 tons per month. Now, so that means that already 450 tons of foreign exchange is being lost not because ugu is not available mm. but the production and the quality of ugu that can pass you know the required regulatory uh, regulatory standards huh? is not there so okay. all we need to do is encourage more people to produce but produce under right regulation to mm. meet international so once you are working with international standards you automatically take care of 
food security and food safety locally. So it's more important to look at, let's export and let's meet the local production. Mm. And uh, for that underscore, very quickly, the, the need for agriculture to be driven from the local, you know, uh, from municipality, you know, local government, state levels. Yes. Like you said, mm. it's, it's not really about the federal government. No, it's not, it's not mm. about the federal government. Mm. Okay, All thank right. you so much, African farmer Mogaji, CEO, <laughs> X-Ray Farms uh, Consulting. You can be sure that I'll be consulting with you on that. Yeah, this maybe one. I'll end dollars from you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.